So I know I was hyped for issue one, but now that we're kind of getting into issue three, I'm kind of starting to feel like this either should have been a graphic novel, like with continuing stories, or it should have been a Titan book. Because right now, the way this reads, it does not work in sh uh, short, single comic issues. Because with comics, you, you kind of want to keep your audience engaged. And in Aliens, you want that engagement. And I'm just, I'm, I'm not feeling it. I could be wrong. You know, I, I've, I'm, not, I'm not perfect by any means. But with Alien and horror in general, you usually take the first half of your, uh, like the first act to introduce the characters so that you care about them. That way, as we start to launch into issue two, we're invested in what is going on. And right now, it just, shorthand comic form is just feeling too slow. And that's, that's not good for a comic series. But let's talk about who made this first. This is the concepts by Paul and Leon Reiser. Adam F. Goldberg, Hans Rodnoff, and Brian Volkweiss. Part 3 is written by uh, Hans Rodnoff. Artist is Guru Villanova. Letter, Yin Nitro. Letter is VC Kate and Kells. And there's everyone else working on the book. <clears throat> so we've come to learn that this essentially retcons Alien 3. Now, spoilers, if you haven't watched the videos that I've recorded or you haven't read these comics in general, but this one kind of pays off the last two issues. So if you don't want to be spoiled, pause this video, go to your local comic shop or wherever you like to get your books, grab it, come back, read them, and you're back. So what happened was, in issue one, Burke survived the Hive encounter. And uh, he was able to sneak onto the escape ship, watch the, the fight with Ripley and the alien queen, and then while everyone was in hypersleep, he sent out a message to Waylon Yutani saying he survived. And they're basically saying, he, he said that, please, I'll do whatever I can to get back in the company. I have a family to take care of. So they pin the whole Hadley's Hope destruction on him. So even though he survived, he's basically put on a backwater planet. His family hates him. And his life just sucks. So what he's wanting to do is he's wanting to get an oval morph for its healing capabilities. Uh-huh. To show that he's really not that bad of a guy. Mm-hmm. And his uh, android pal here, I can't remember the android's name off the top of my head, finally finds one after umpteen years. Like, the, he, he put the alien to get the alien, the android together when he was young, but it took this this guy 30-something years to find an egg, which is kind of dumb right off the bat. But when he finally brings it back, we're up to Burke in his late 60s. His daughter hates him. His wife's dying of some ailment, so she's in uh, suspended animation. And this Waylon Yukatani Corp comes and, and sort of smirks at him. And so Burke's wanting to find who's going to have to impregnate the uh, facehugger with. And he goes through everyone at work, and there's like this whole friends kind of comedy soapbox opera thing. It's boring as shit, I'm not gonna lie. So at the end, this way, the Newtani Corp comes to talk to him, and they basically knock him out and wake him up in front of the face hugger. He goes, No, no, let me out of here, Burke, you maniac. And even though the artwork's kind of meh compared to what we saw in Alien Stronghold or any of the Dark Horse comics. It at least serves the purpose of seeing the terror in this dude's face. And Bert, just cool as a cucumber. I know this is an uncomfortable situation. I'm very sorry. Honestly, no pillows to be found. But the whole name-calling thing, not very nice. The only reason I'm doing this is to show the universe that I'm not a maniac. Yeah, psychopath seems like a better fit. Trust me, hero. Your service is going to end up saving a lot of sick, suffering people. And not that it matters. You'll be fine. Cygnus, that's the guy's name. Cygnus over there knows how to uh, get that baby out. No problem. Have you had kidney stones? It's like that. And then the uh, running gags. This <sighs> Aliens could have dry humor, but just like straight up like Paul Reisner, kind of like a mad about you comedy, does not work in this universe. Because hand it to God, you'll be fine. Cygnus said the procedure has a 98% chance of success. I said 90. 90? 
But I'm pretty sure you said either way, 90%. That's not bad. And a lot better than 80. And that just kind of starts to become a running th- gag. Running gags in an alien type situation just does not work. And Hero here finally says, you know, please, we don't have to argue. The fact is I hate Weyland Yutani just as much as you two. And he goes, I seriously doubt that, Mr. Yu. That's not actually my name. My last name isn't Yu. It's Yutani. Wait, you're Shin Yutani's son? Yes. And he comes, uh, these two kind of form an alliance, basically saying he hates his dad and he's just doing this. And his dad wants to kind of hide him. So they put him on this back planet where Burke is. And so push come to shove, the alien gets away in a way that I don't want to spoil the book for you. But the book kind of goes into everyone having to chase down the damn face hugger. It goes down to the mines. Down in the mines is where his daughter works. And his daughter absolutely hates him because she believes what Leyland Yutani said. Which, I hate to say it, that, you know, the, the scandal or not, Burke was a dick. And there's not a whole lot we can do to show a redemption. Because you just see what's going on here. She goes, hey, Peanut, we need to go as in right now. Not happening. You're not supposed to. No time to argue. And so they kind of have a back and forth. Bree and uh, Shiro here. He goes, I'm Hiro. Or Hiro, not Shiro. I'm thinking of Sunfire. I'm Hiro Yotani. We need to get you and the entire crew above ground immediately. Well, Hiro Yotani, nobody who works with my dad has zero credibility with me. And so he kind of throws on the charm scene how he hates his dad too. And we kind of see where this is kind of starting to go with both of them oh boy let's find a way to piss off dad and again here comes the face hugger the artwork for the most part as you can see is not bad it's it's relatively dynamic but put it against let me see if i can find it real quick i'm just not a fan of new art styles i mean there's a lot that you can do with digital art where you know the tracing you can get things to look a little bit more precise but it just this compared to traditional art styles this is boring now yeah they could have made this a little more dynamic but still the way the aliens going over dr strong here and the actual hand-drawn terror in her face as it's holding this severed arm yeah i'm gonna pick this any day but that's just me I've told you guys this before. I'm old, I'm bitter, I'm cranky, and um, what it is, I'm not with anymore. So you can call me an old fuddy-duddy, but I miss traditional comic book styles compared to what is being done nowadays. But again, it, it doesn't deter from the fact that, yeah, them trying to find the facehugger is kind of interesting, but it keeps getting away. <sighs> And then again, with the running gag, what happens is, is, oh, the probability of getting out of him is 98%. It's 80. 80? We're at 80 now? And he goes, now it's nine, uh, 70. 70? Come on, you're killing. That type of humor just does not work in this universe. All right, suffice it to say, the alien does eventually find a host. Um, Hiro and Bree, Burke's father, find each other. And we come to find out why Cygnus's um, percentages went down throughout the entire book. <laughs> I don't know. I, I Issues 4 is out. I have it on order. And I heard that things are finally starting to, supposed to be picking up with issue 4, which I hope it is. Because these last three, just to finally get to some form of what Alien is, has been too damn slow in this book. That's why I said... I want to know what happens. I'm interested to see what would have happened if Carter Burke had survived. But the covers are so misleading because it shows the aliens take... I'm waiting for the aliens to take over this planet, which, again, is kind of an old trope. But one thing that I will give this book and this book and the one that we'll be going over here eventually, the Black, White, and Blood issue 2, is at least... And I talked about this in the review yesterday. We are seeing stuff past Aliens 3. Yes, this retcons Alien 3, but we're at least seeing an, a future past what happened with Ripley. This one, 
follows the uh, canon of, of the Dark Horse comics from the 80s before Alien 3 ever got on the map, before it became Extended Universe. And then these are just out there doing their own thing. So that's why, again, I'm pissed off at Romulus and this TV show saying, oh, it needs to be set between an alien and aliens, and it, it needs to be before Prometheus. Knock it off with the prequels. Us fans are sick of that shit. We want to move forward into the future and see things. And that's, again, why I'm going to be going over into Charybdis, because Alex, is it Alex White? Alex White, I think this is his name. Hold on. I got the book right here. We'll find out real quick. Yeah, Alex White. These follow the canon of Alien 3. And the reason I want to go over this with you all on the After Dark channel is because it follows Dr. Matsush uh, Matsushita, I believe is how you pronounce his name, the alien, the doctor that talked to Ripley in the, uh, what do you call it, the director's cut, saying that the procedure would be quick, the guy with the, the hooded mask. But anyway, he makes an appearance in this book, and there's a particular type of colonial marine uh, troop that is made in this book called the Midnighters that uh, were built out of the the FUBAR mission that was Hadley's Hope. So this is all future stuff, giving us further lore into the aliens. So that's why I'm irked at Fox for making these really shitty choices with the movies. But at least we got other mediums that are giving us something. So that's why we'll be going with this on the After Dark channel once I reread it. We went over Stronghold, great. You can see why this irks my girk, but at least it's given us something different. Though I do feel like it should have been a novel or a uh, um, graphic novel because... Okay, side note. <laughs> Trade paperbacks are collected singles. So once this run's done, however many issues, they'll put it into a collected trade or like collected trade volume one, two, three, which is collecting however many books. A uh, graphic novel would be a self-contained story that's that size of a book and it may be self-contained or it may have part one part two part three but it has that large book format that is a, a graphic novel compared to collected trades so that aside if you guys have enjoyed what you've seen with this one or any of these other mediums that we've gone over here please first and foremost support your local comic shop or your local bookshop and grab these and check them out i want to hear what you all think and if you've enjoyed this review Really would appreciate if you take a moment to like, share, and subscribe. Helps the channel more than you could possibly know. And if you don't mind hitting that fancy little xenomorph bell, next subscribe. That way I can upload content. You guys get notified. Come to the channel, and I love hearing from y'all and all your feedback down in the comments below or the socials, which I'll make sure there are links down in the description. So with all that said, hope y'all continue to have an absolutely amazing day reading, and happy hunting, everyone.